This is George. Now I put George up against the wall so we can shoot him. And I always use George if I'm demonstrating a lighting technique or experimenting because you have to use a still life subject who doesn't move because otherwise you can't replicate the same conditions when you change something in the shot. So we'll use George. Now George is wearing pretty crumpled clothing. The advantage of using creased and crumpled clothing is that it will show up all the shadows and demonstrate the lighting better. And now we've added a camera so that we can get comparative still shots as we go. And of course there's the lights themselves. Now in each case we're using a standard generator unit or a power pack if you prefer and we're setting the power of the flash down to exactly 100 joules so that each light gets exactly the same power. This light is giving about the same kind of output that you'd get with the economy ranges of flash heads and of course to maintain the consistency in each case we're using the same flash head the only thing that's changing is going to be the modifier fitted to it and in each case the flash head is exactly three feet away from our friend George and the height remains constant in each case now at the moment we're lighting this scene with the modeling light from the flash itself and also with some additional lighting to help the video but we'll turn this additional lighting off now so the only lighting that we're going to be using is the light from the modeling lights themselves now obviously the modeling lights don't contribute to exposure at all but we're using the modeling lights so you can see where the shadows fall and get a very good indication of the effect of the modeling lights of course there are always some people who seem to believe that the modeling lights from flash heads don't give a good indication of what the flash is actually going to do I'm not too sure why people believe this it is true that the modeling lights on some of the flash units the ones with very low powered modeling lights are not bright enough to give a true indication but as you'll see as we carry on with this test they do give a very very good indication if we use reasonably powerful lights. The modeling lamp in this flash head is 250 watts quartz halogen and it does give a pretty good indication of the real thing. Okay let's make a start. What we have here is a standard 7 inch reflector and it's giving a pretty directional light here. Now you can see very very harsh shadows from the jacket onto the t-shirt. You can see shadows on the jacket itself the texture is revealed and shown very very clearly there are shadows everywhere in fact and just look at how sharp that shadow is on the background now of course we wouldn't normally photograph a real person this close to background I've put George up against the wall because it shows the shadow effect very well now of course if we were to move this light further away bearing in mind it's only three feet away then the shadow edges would be even more clearly defined. First thing we're going to do now is take a shot using the still camera. And the very first thing to do is to take an instant meter reading just about here, back to the camera, and that's reading 16.5. In other words, half a stop less than 16, so we set the camera between f16 and f22 which of course is F19, we take the shot and here's the shot on the screen and as you can see it pretty well matches the effect that you see with just the modeling light and the shadows are very very clearly defined. Let's move on now to our next type of light modifier and here we're going to use a reflective umbrella. Silver is a little bit less soft than the white reflective umbrellas but really we don't use reflective umbrellas at all if we're trying to get soft lighting simply because they can't produce soft lighting. One of the reasons they can't produce soft lighting is that it's not possible to place them close to the subject now. You'll see why this is in just a moment. As we're now going to be using an umbrella, I fitted it with a wide angle reflector because we need a wide angle reflector with umbrellas. 
The light itself is exactly the same distance away as before, three feet. The light itself is facing away from the subject and the light's being reflected into the reflective umbrella which then reflects it back towards the subject. Now because of this, although the light is only three feet away, the umbrella itself is nearly 50% further away than before. It's now four foot five inches away from the subject at its closest point. Now obviously this cannot create soft lighting because one of the important things about soft lighting is that it has to be close to the subject. Now the light is now travelling much further and of course it's also being diffused so my guess is that we need about three stops more of power. Let's take a meter reading and see what we get. Uh, yep, not a bad guess. That's now reading F5.6 decimal 1 which is about three and a half stops less power being delivered to our subject George. So we'll forget about the decimal one, one tenth of a stop, and we set the camera to f5.6 and take a picture. And here's our picture. Now if I wanted to adopt a really purist approach, I could reduce the power to flash very, very slightly to make it exactly 5.6, but it doesn't really matter. Now, the big advantage of reflective umbrellas is that the light from them is very, very directional. It's controlled. Now, that can be a big help in a lot of situations. But we're moving on now to something entirely different.